Okay, so this is a decline in expected cash flows. I see. A lot of their business is just like, a lot of the, the income statement is basically just like a, irrelevant for this company just because of the way the accounting rules work. Okay, so here's more like a, a common sense kind of So there's two two income statements here. distribution is actually still pretty significant. It's declining, obviously, but... Oops. So they took in $2.8 billion of cash, basically. Um, it's kind of a way to think of their revenue. And then they had a couple hundred million of expenses. So EBITDA, adjusted EBITDA of $2 billion, $2.5 billion. We'll probably be around $2 billion this year. So it's like 10 times earnings. I don't know how to think about this. Depends on the life of these royalties. Well, we can model it out, right? statement. These are so squirrely. Here's the balance sheet. This at least should be easy to understand. making good investments and they'll, it's worth more than a book, but that's kind of a concept that's really interesting. 16.8 billion balance sheet. I made a typo somewhere in here. Here it is, 691. Great. All right, let's look at the liabilities. Uh, yeah, I don't have a number pad. It's pretty frustrating. Uh, I have a mechanical keyboard without a number pad and a non-mechanical keyboard with. What am I missing here? There we go. Hmm, still doing something wrong. There we go. All right, so seven billion in debt, two billion in cash. Roughly the same financial picture as last quarter. They don't pay taxes. I can imagine that makes a lot of sense. I mean, the royalty company probably would do taxes as a major expense, so find a way to not pay them. It's 
a little, a little odd. It's interesting they've been deploying less capital. That's not a good leading indicator for them. I think in this business, you want to be deploying as much capital as possible. It's kind of a bizarre company, obviously. It's very one of a kind type of business. Um, we have to sort of forecast their long-term royalties. Um, that's not easy. I know Tesabri is supposed to have a generic at some point. We have to look at the cystic fibrosis um, product line and sort of think about that. Promact is a pill, so we can tell when Promacta goes generic. FDA's Orange Book does that. Very important website. seem to be working, but still a very important website. There we go. This is El Trombo Pag. It was approved in 2009, so it's probably going to be generic really soon. <laughs> Some of the patents are already expiring. Yeah, this patent's expired. Oh, that's a Novartis patent. Let's look at this one. It's another Novartis patent. Did Novartis invent a trauma pack? I didn't think so. Might have been ligand for Novartis or something like that. I don't know. It certainly looks like it was Novartis. Was orphan drug exclusivity in 2025? I don't think that applies to the whole product. When will a trauma pack go generic? Let's see. Here it is. Amino ethanol. Biphenyl carboxylic acid. There's the biphenyl carboxylic acid piece. That's the amino to amino ethanol, I guess acting as a salt or an acid, maybe both. <laughs> um, acting as a buffer. 2,3-hydroxy, no, 2-hydroxy, 3-biphenyl carboxylic acid. The rest of it, you have dimethylphenyl. That, that's that group here. The birzol group here. So when will this bad boy go generic? Let me look again at this pattern. First patent. Tipo Memetics. I remember when Tipo came out. This looks like this molecule, right? 3 4 dimethyl, 3 methyl, 5 oxo, 1 5 dihydropyrazole, 2 hydroxy, 3 biphenyl carboxylic acid. That's it. And this patent has expired, ladies and gentlemen. So what we could do is we could look for the and, uh, let's see, L trombo pag and uh, We'll see how that lawsuit is progressing. Or paragraph four. Let's look for paragraph four. Okay, there's an ANDA from Octavus. Paragraph four list. Where to list at? Oh, this this has been out. This has been on uh, paragraph four for a while. Only one ANDA submitted. That's it. This is a massive drug. It's not like a two billion, three billion dollar drug. Okay, there's a bunch of and is there. There's Teva's, like a tentative approval there. Teva, hetero, and Actavis. I'm assuming there's a lawsuit. And Tilia will be fine, have some patience. This is very easy to make. You can make this in two or three steps. Practically insoluble. Jesse, let's cook. This is the wrong patent. There is a settlement. 2028? Well, can't look into this too carefully, but I would say this drug will be gone by 2025. And usually when the drug goes generic, I don't think you get any royalties anymore, right? Maybe it depends on the country, I don't know. Trimphi is an antibody, so Trimphi will be around in a minute. But the royalty looks very skinny. It's like, uh, well, not that bad. 3, 4, 
let's see, 3.6%. So I divide this by 3.6, get a sense for Trinfile's potential. I think it can hit six or seven billion at peak. And then it'll probably decline from there. Go off into the sunset. Trilogy. That's a weird one. Janubia we can model pretty easily. That's just going to go off into the sunset. That's generic, basically. Not actually. Cabomedics is going generic soon too. Um, Prevamus just got approval. Trodelby just got approval. Some of these are pretty young, but they're small. Other products we can also kind of model as a slow decline. The biggest one though is probably like Tysabri. We have to look at the terms. I don't know the exact end of rules. I wish I did. Um, but yeah, I think some companies do do that to get the lock in that 180 day. Um, so Tysabri, when a biosimilar hits, I don't think they'll get, yeah, the problem is their deployment, right? They, they, the number of, uh, their, their acquisitions of royalties have dropped about 20%. They were flat then they dropped a significant amount in 2022. So I do need to model their base business. So I know how far that gap is between, all right, and Rubica is sort of another dog and Rubica is dropping. And then a Rubicle will go generic too. Extanity is a great product, but I don't know how much more it's going to grow. And it will also go generic at some point. Let me put like a placeholder at 2030 for generic. I don't know quite frankly when it does go generic, but we can look that up in a minute. I'm just being very lazy. The biggest thing is the cystic fibrosis franchise, and that's going to be pretty healthy, I think, for a while. If a gene therapy comes out, that would be a little bit devastating. Um, but they, they will, some of those drugs will go generic and just for purposes of modeling will end them at 2035. So if I look at their loyalty receipts left, I can discount that at a really, really low. Buffett um, does a lot of it on pen and paper with calculator. So, you know, HP 12C, I, I keep it on me. I don't know where my 12C is at. Somebody gets a hold of my 12C, there could be problems. Give me one minute. I don't want to leave it around with the kitty. I ain't supposed to leave this around without any security. You know, I got to put it in a safe or something. That thing, that thing thing. I remember my uncle Nick showed me my first 12C. He had it in his crib. I learned RPN from an early age. I picked that up. I was like, this, this small. It's as big as this. It's almost as big as nibbles over here. Right? And he said, whoa, son, you don't know how to use that thing. Let me show you. You got to respect your 12C. You got to. You respect it. It respects you. Right, kitty? Where's my baby? Can't leave this around you, kitty. It's dangerous. You might diversify somebody's bonds. You don't diversify bonds? I don't know nothing about my bonds. You're just a baby. All right, RP. Is this one's going generic pretty soon, too? Parksegia can't have too much long left in it either. Adrisdi, though, just started. Well, I think Adrisdi is peaked already, which is weird. Shardell, we may grow up for some time. And Galadi is dog. Huxley is whatever. These are kind of back of the envelope numbers. So what's the long-term discount rate for a close to riskless asset? Try a couple different ones. There's 
no, nothing, no computational cost, unlike the 12C. We don't have any limit on what we could necessarily discount by. So we could discount by all of these. Hmm. That's interesting. Call 22 billion? Yeah, I, I agree, C tanker. I wouldn't play with FRC. That sounds like a mistake. Um, so 22 billion from that stuff. I'm not sure I'm modeling it all correctly, by the way. Uh, but the enterprise value is 26. So you're getting four from this pipeline. I'm not sure which of these is going to get you that four. Maybe it's the MK drug. Some of those cardiovascular drugs don't look so great. We know Tron Tenemab's probably not going to work. Um, yeah, so the, the, port, the pipeline doesn't look so great. It kind of looks fairly valued. I mean, if they can find more deals, um, I am legally allowed to trade stocks, yes. Um, WAC as a rate of return is, is a, you know, that's a very, you know, the pull point to me of WAC is the idea that you have to grade management's future returns, right? And that's hard because if you knew what, what somebody's future returns were, like for a hedge fund or something like that, that'd be really great to know, but you know, it's impossible to know. Um, you can look at track record, but that doesn't tell you a lot either. So you have to assess management in real time, right? And think, okay, this is, what just went wrong here? Open AI is farting at me. <laughs> 